Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to my Intel 8700K video editing PC simple build guide. Yes, I said it, I am building with another Intel CPU. If you guys have been following the channel, I've been doing multiple different build guides, ranging from a 600 and something dollar computer all the way up to close to $4,000, but all of them have been using AMD processors. That's because AMD has been killing it with Ryzen and Threadripper and they've been providing so much value. Well, Intel has just punched back, released new processors, including this one, and I think now, most likely, my perspective and my recommendations are gonna change, at least for the best bang for the buck video editing PC, not the cheapest, not the most powerful, best bang for the buck, most likely to this Intel 8700K. So I had to buy the parts, I had to test this out for myself. So all the links to all these parts are gonna be listed in the video description. After we build this PC, I'll have another video that comes out showing off all the performance and the comparison. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you guys don't miss out. On top of that, to all my camera guys out there, we're shooting this on a brand new camera that I'm very excited to be testing out. So far, I am loving it. So this video looks different than my previous videos. That's why, and I will put a link to that new camera in the video description as well for all of you guys who are curious. Now, the guys who are gonna be asking, why is there two graphics cards here? Well, I always try to test out multiple configurations so I can give you guys the best recommendations. Sometimes the cheaper graphics card actually performs better in both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, like my last bang for the buck, uh, best bang for the buck video editing PC, but other times it could be a flop. NVIDIA graphics card could be better for Premiere and an AMD graphics card better for Resolve. So I wanna test it out so I can give you guys the best, most accurate information for you to base your builds off of. Now this video is gonna be a little bit different. In the past I did, I was talking while I was doing stuff, it makes it longer. This time it's gonna be voiceover, so the video should be a lot shorter overall, but I'm still gonna show off each and every single step. So if you guys buy these parts, you guys will know exactly what to do step by step to put one together, get a great video editing computer, much better price and better parts than just buying something off the shelf. Thank you guys. Once again, links are in the video description. Any questions can be asked in the comment section below and let's get started. Let's start off taking a look at all of the parts. Here we have our motherboard. I like to set it on top of the box when I'm building, that way it doesn't get damaged at the bottom. Here we have our water cooling kit, M.2 SSD. We have our RAM. I have two sticks of 16 gigabyte for a total of 32 gigs. That way if your motherboard has four slots, you can add two more sticks later and get a grand total of 64 gigs. Next we have our power supply. This thing is a little bit underpowered. It does the job, everything runs just fine, but I would prefer maybe a 600, 650, 700. I just had this one on hand so I ended up using it. We have our CPU, the 8700K. Two fans for the front of the case. I like to buy these Corsair Quiet Edition fans because they are fairly quiet and they're not too expensive and I prefer my systems to be quiet. And we have our graphics card. So here I have a GTX 1070 and I also have a RX 580. I like to test a couple different graphics cards that are in the price range to see which one works better for the pairing with the CPU. Starting off our build, we're gonna take off our side panel and set it aside because we won't be needing this for a while. Next, we're gonna take out the hardware and all the zip ties and cable ties. I'm gonna start off by installing my CPU. You don't have to do this right away, but I prefer to do so. You just have to be careful not to touch the top of it so you don't get any oils on the CPU itself. So grip it by the sides and there's a little triangle in the corner. You need to match it up with the CPU socket, drop it in, don't push it in or anything like that. And then as soon as you close the cover, uh, that top little plastic cover is gonna pop off. Now I'm gonna install my M.2 SSD. This motherboard has a little aluminum heat sink and cover, so we're gonna take that off and then uh, just put the actual SSD inside. The SSD is only gonna fit in one way, so make sure that you don't force it in. The sticker side should be facing you if you bought one of these MX300s. We're gonna grab one of the little bolts and just carefully tighten it down. You can peel off the backing for the little thermal pad and install the little heatsink cover. Next, we're gonna install the I.O. shield. Now, these things can be a pain. Um, they're just using this kind of a compression fitting. So take your time, be careful not to get cut by the edges and just apply some pressure on each end. Now let's insert the CPU water cooling back plate. You could just follow the directions to see where you need to insert these little metal pins. Don't force it in, it should go in only one way. If your water cooling kit is brand new, it's gonna have a thermal pad already applied to the water block, but since I've used this one already, I'm gonna apply a little bit of thermal paste. 
You want to place the water block right at the center of the CPU. Don't apply any pressure and try not to have it move too much side to side so it doesn't unevenly uh, spread the paste. You want to align it and then you want to carefully and slowly tighten all the screws on each end of the water block. Don't just tighten one down all the way. Get it about a third and then move on. Rotate around. That way you're putting pressure evenly onto the CPU. Now let's attach the three pin cable to the motherboard. This is what's going to power the pump that's built into the all in one water cooling kit. It's really difficult to record this, but you guys see where I plug that into. Since these cases are universal, we need to install a couple extra standoffs that are going to support the motherboard and allow it to be tightened down to the case. So we're going to have two of these and our tool that's going to help us. And for this specific motherboard, we need to install one up here at the top left hand corner. And then the second one is going to go right below it next to the PCI slots. Now we're going to install our motherboard. You want to carefully lower it at an angle so that all the I.O. at the back lines up with our I.O. shield. You want to lower it at a 45 degree angle, get it all lined, and then press kind of slightly left as you install it. After that, just take your time and screw it down to the case. The next step is to remove the 120 millimeter fan from the rear of the case. This is going to be replaced with our all-in-one water cooling kit. Now we're going to remove the other side panel that's going to give us access to install our power supply. The power supply that I used has a bunch of cables that are non-removable and since our build is fairly simple we're not going to use all of those cables. This does make it a little bit more of a pain. Just take your time and route it through the other side of the case and then screw down your power supply. I would recommend spending a little bit more money and getting something as modular cable so you don't have to deal with this mess and you just use the cables that you need. Now we're going to go ahead and route the power cable to the CPU. You could typically do this without removing the motherboard but this case is really quite tight up there so I decided to remove two screws at the top of the motherboard allowing me to slightly flex the motherboard and get it uh, through much easier. Um, if you buy a different case, especially the one that I suggested in the description instead of this one, you're going to have a much easier time. Now we'll take our 24 pin and I'm going to route this through the left hand side. Our CPU connector attaches at the top left hand side of the motherboard and you can only put it in one way so you really can't mess up. The 24 pin is exactly the same but it's at the top right hand side of the motherboard. And if you unscrew the top two motherboard screws you can go ahead and put those back. Now we're going to be plugging in our fans that are on the radiator for the water cooler. I'm plugging mine in at the top left hand side. And what you're going to be installing is you want to pay attention to the airflow. We want it to be sucking air and pushing all that hot air outside of the case. Get your fan aligned and then put the bolts into the slots just to hold the fan. And then we're going to have to attach the radiator and the other fan all at one time so this whole assembly would be held down by those rear screws at the back of the case. And that secondary fan is going to get plugged in right below the M.2 SSD cover. Now let's insert the RAM. There's two clips at the top that you want to open up. We don't have any at the bottom. And the RAM sticks will only go in one way. So pay attention to where uh, the little cut is and don't force it in. If it's not going in, flip it around. You probably have it backwards. You want to apply even pressure at the top and the bottom and the top clip will automatically close once the RAM is inserted. Now let's route some of our other cables. Here we have the HD audio cable for uh, the front microphone and speaker output at the front of the case. That connector is right back here where our rear audio ports are. It will also just go in one way, so route it underneath and plug it in. This specific motherboard comes with some extensions making it a lot easier to connect your various cables to the motherboard. So we're going to plug this little extension in and then route it through to the back of the case. Now we can connect our reset switch, our power switch, shut down um, our LED connectors. And last, we're going to connect our USB 3 and USB 2 ports at the front of the case to the motherboard. Our USB 2 connects right next to the M.2 cover. It also only goes in one way. And same thing goes for our USB 3, but that is at the bottom left hand side. Now let's install our graphics card. Since most of these higher end graphics cards are dual slots, we're going to take off uh, the two top covers of the PCI slots. 
I didn't show it here on video, but at the top PCI slot, there's a little uh, lock that you just have to press down on. You guys will see it'll automatically close here at the bottom right hand side of the screen. You want to align the graphics card to the PCI slot and just press down. That lock will auto initiate and you can replace those two screws for the PCI slots. Next, find the PCIe cable, which is going to feed power to the graphics card and route that through. I'm going to take some of these other cables and kind of organize them a little bit and just place them in there. You want to take a little bit of time, get these cables so they don't stick out too much or else you're going to have a hard time closing that back slot. And once again, we want to plug this into the graphics card. It will only go in one way, so you really can't mess up. Now we're going to install our fans to the front of the case. You guys saw the little clips there. We have a set of them at the bottom and also at the top. These are very easy to break, so you just want to lightly press down on them as you pull the cover off. We're going to grab our two Quiet Edition Corsair fans, get the threading screws that are included with them, and take your time here. Uh, this is a bit of a pain because these Corsair fans are not pre-threaded. If you buy some higher end ones, typically they're a little bit easier, but you want to just line them up to the slots and uh, get those screws started. I wouldn't screw them in all the way. Just get them th hand threaded so the fan will stay there and then take your time using a screwdriver. And once again, go all the way around. Don't just screw uh, one of the screws down all the way because you're going to have uneven uh, mounting with your fan. I'm personally not going to be installing a three and a half inch hard drive, so I'm just going to unscrew um, this hard drive cage, and that's going to give us a little bit better airflow and a nicer look as well. Now that the fans are installed, I'm going to grab their three pin connectors and route them through this little middle section designed specifically for these cables and pull them through all the way so we don't have any loose cables or any slack here. Unfortunately, this motherboard doesn't have a lot of 3-pin fan connectors, so I had to buy a couple of these adapters. I will have links to these in the video description, just in case you're using this motherboard. And they're very simple. Plug the fans in one end, and then the Molex 4-pin connectors get plugged into um, the Molex power that comes out of your power supply. Now I'm going to do a little bit of cable management to get it looking a little bit neater. Install the front cover on our case and install our wireless antenna for uh, the motherboard's wireless card that's built in. And this is going to be for Wi-Fi and for Bluetooth. Now is the moment of truth. Will the PC boot up? If you did everything correctly and hopefully you didn't have any parts that were uh, sent that weren't properly working, everything should boot up just fine. So as soon as you press this power button, you'll get some fan noise and the motherboard and case fans should light up. Now let's connect a monitor, a wired keyboard, and a mouse. And even if you don't have Windows installed, you should get the motherboard's BIOS that's going to pop up. And here we want to take a look at a few things to make sure everything is good. One, the CPU temperature. We don't want it to be anywhere kind of above you know, the low 40s. You're seeing we're at 29. Our RAM is showing up, so we have both RAM sticks. And here we're seeing our all-in-one water cooling pump and the two fans that we have plugged into the motherboard. So those are showing up as well. And here in the SATA information, we're seeing that crucial MX300 SSD. To finish off, let's install Windows 10. If you bought one that's already on a USB drive, you'll have that. Or you can download Windows 10 from Microsoft's website and create your own USB like I did. You should plug it in and automatically you'll get a Windows installation pop up. This process is very, very simple. Microsoft has been making it easier and easier over the years. So you literally follow this guide. Now, if you don't have a product key yet, uh, all you have to do is hit that button and they'll still let you install the full version of Windows and then you can um, enter in your serial code at a later time. I'm using Windows 10 Pro here. Here I'm going to hit custom to install a brand new Windows operating system. Select the drive that you have and click new which is going to format your M.2 SSD or whatever hard drive that you're using and allow you to install Windows. After that, you can click next, and then the Windows installation is going to guide you through all the other steps. Most of it's automated, then you select a PC name. Once you hit your desktop, pretty much everything should be auto-installed, but I would suggest going and downloading the latest drivers from either NVIDIA's or AMD's website.
All right, guys, thank you for watching my 8700K build guide. If you did decide to go with a different motherboard or a different graphics card or some other part, it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, you guys have all the steps listed in this video. You just replace that with your motherboard. You might have to look up a few things in the motherboard manual if the ports are in a different spot, but this should get you almost all the way there or completely there if you're using the same parts. So if you guys have any questions, you guys can ask in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer those questions. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you guys hit those notifications. Uh, notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.